you've heard this term many times um, as you have navigated work at DECA. And if you're like me, you're probably like, what in the world? So my first day of work literally was at the Kansas Leadership Center talking about leadership stuff. And I came into the room and people were talking about these adaptive challenges. And that's a technical element. And I thought, what in the world is this? So this is one of those foundational courses that you can take, and then you'll at least have a clue what we're talking about when we talk about those things. So thank you for joining us. I would like everybody to, if you can, turn on your cameras, uh, but if not, at least unmute and introduce yourselves this morning. Tell us your name and where you are sitting today. And how about, um, tell me something that everybody seems to like, but you don't. All right, so I'll start. I'm Kelly Garcia. I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma, and everybody seems to like Game of Thrones, but I don't. So let's go to Sarah and then Alex. Okay. Um, it's funny because I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> Um, let's see something that I like. I, I'm going to say pumpkin spice lattes. Everybody seems to love pumpkin spice lattes and I like pumpkin things, but I don't like those. So I don't know. Very good. And you're in Topeka, right? I'm in Topeka. Correct. And thank you. Sarah and Alex are producing for us today. So thank you very much. Alex. All right. Uh, my name is Alex Weeble, DECA communication strategist uh, based in the Topeka office. I've uh, been here uh, six years. A thing that I don't really seem to care for that other people do, um, the office. I haven't really seen the show and really, I, there's some funny parts, but I haven't quite got into it. So that's, I do like the memes and the videos that they have. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. How about Deanne and then Joy? All right. Hey, everybody. Deanne Armstrong, um, Community Sports Specialist and Training Consultant for the Prevention Team at DECA. I'm sitting in um, southeast Wisconsin, close to Milwaukee. And um, everybody seems to like sushi, and I do not like sushi. That's me. Joy? Sorry, I was zoning out there for a second. I uh, am Joy Schwartz, and I'm a community sports specialist for Southwest Kansas, so I'm in the Pratt office. And one thing I do not like that a lot of people do is coffee. But I also kind of agree with all the others that people have said, too, so... Anyway, but coffee. Now, I love the smell. If I could smell again, I would, you know, I can't smell it anymore, but I do like the smell of it, but don't like the taste of it. Thank you. How about Teresa? And is it Neri or Neri? And then Ariel. I'm Teresa Johnston Art, and I sit in Lawrence in the CPA department. And um, mine's kind of like Joy. I love coffee, but I, do not like Starbucks coffee. I I like wheat. I know, Sarah. <laughs> it's too strong. I'm a wimpy coffee drinker. So um, I've probably been to Starbucks like four times in my life. Um, <clears throat> hi, my name is Nettie. I go, it's spelled like Neri, but I go by Nettie. Um, I'm sitting in the Kansas City area. I'm area level intern Becca and um, I must say that I really haven't gotten into Yellowstone a lot of people have and I just can't get into it I don't know why <laughs> but that's me Yellowstone is awesome <laughs> I figured somebody would say that but I just can't get into it I don't know <laughs> well so is the office so <laughs> I agree with you to give it time. I love the office <laughs> All right, hi everyone. My name is Arielle. I am in Lawrence, Kansas right now. I am the prevention intern at DECA. Um, and one thing that 
everyone likes I would think like Italian food. I don't know why. It's just not really like I like pasta, but not like just like plain pasta, honestly. I don't like any of like the fancy sauces and stuff like that. So interesting. We have so many side conversations we all need to have after this. Okay, Mimi and Monica and then Jenny. All right, I am Mimi. I'm clearly having some audio issues. Uh, video on the computer, audio on the phone. I'm in the Oklahoma office um, and I am the administrative assistant uh, with prevention, specifically here in the Edmond office. Um, and I have never seen a full episode of Friends. Um, and my best friend has won Friends trivia contest. So that's something I hear about a lot that I really should watch, but I've just never seen it. Good morning, guys. Um, I'm Monica here in the admin office as well with a prevention specialist. And this sounds controversial, but I could pass on summer. I just, it's too hot. I burn. It's not fun. I think I'm up next. Um, so I'm Jenny Lancaster. I am with um, traffic safety, and I am in the Topeka office. Um, Kelly, I am loving this icebreaker. Uh, this is so interesting. <laughs> um, so something uh, that I don't care for that seems like everyone else does is watermelon. Like, I don't like watermelon, the actual fruit, but I love watermelon flavored, you know, like artificially flavored things. Just don't like watermelon. Fascinating stuff. Okay, Jody and Cynthia. Okay, I am Jody Pugh. I work in traffic safety and I am in the Winfield office. Um, something I do not like, well, this will start a ruckus probably, but <laughs> I am not a fan of bacon. Everybody goes ballistic over bacon, except me. I'm the weird one that's like, yeah, I'll pass on it. Thanks. Okay, that one hurts, Jody. I know. I, I told you it was going to start a ruckus. <laughs> Jody, you're just like my fiance. Doesn't like bacon either. So <laughs> I get to eat. Oh all my the gosh. Me and your fiance need a meat, and we'll just go to oh, breakfast. Cynthia, it's time no to bacon. get out then. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> great in every other way he doesn't like coffee or bacon so I feel like I, oh, I get all of goodness. that in our household yeah. works for me no sharing yeah. um I think something I um I don't like that a lot of other people like um are Will Ferrell movies I just I I don't know I don't get his humor profile so I, I pass on that um more than other people I like how you put that I don't get his humor profile that's awesome <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. I have so many comments. And if I weren't trying to be professional, I'd be like, I don't like coffee either. The office is the bomb. What's the matter with summer? Come on, guys. Uh, but let's um, now that you know that it's OK to show your camera and or unmute, please continue to do that for the rest of our little session today. Part of the fun of these leadership things, you guys, is really connecting with people across the agency. To me, it's as valuable as the content itself. So um, I encourage you to, to just do that. And when we ask questions and try to think about DECA scenarios, um, please lean into that and share. So for you to be thinking about, um, I will be asking for somebody to share some adaptive challenges um, at DECA. So as you start to learn what that is, maybe you'll be willing to share some of those. So let's get started with a quote and if you need to turn off your camera that's totally fine all right so stay diagnostic even as you take action so this quote comes from this uh ron heifetz and he was one of the consultants at kansas leadership center when they they first started so it helps us realize that in this adaptive work which we'll talk about we're never done diagnosing uh, so adaptive work by nature requires change. So you think about adapting or changing. 
And so we know that because environments and conditions at work especially are constantly changing, so we know too that diagnosis continually is necessary to make progress. So this, this notion that we're going to be diagnostic. Now, I bet if you go into other circles and you say, well, let's diagnose the problem, somebody is going to look at you like you have three heads. But at DECA, if you do that, we'll know what you're talking about. So when you're thinking about di distinguishing between technical and adaptive work, remaining diagnostic is going to help you figure out the most appropriate approach in your toolbox to make progress. Okay, so you're in your third session of leadership, um, DECA style, as we call it, and our definition is mobilizing people to make progress on deep, daunting, adaptive, adaptive challenges. Because the technical challenges, as you will discover, are fairly, fairly simple. We know that leadership involves others. It, it's, it requires learning, and it's usually complicated and difficult. So we're working in this diagnosed situation sector of, of our um, KLC competencies here. And so we're in this distinguished technical and adaptive work right here. So you'll see where you're headed in your work here as you, if you have enrolled and plan to continue taking all these different little one hour sessions, you'll see where we're going. But so this is one of the foundational trainings. And we'll talk about it, this, this idea of adaptive, especially work throughout all of this um, other leadership stuff. So it's really important to get this down because everything else um, depends on diagnosing the work properly. Okay, so when we have a problem, our natural tendency is to solve it, right? So when my son says that his Xbox controller is going slow, he will put in batteries. Next slide. And voila, the Xbox controller works. This is good because it doesn't require a whole lot of work on my part. Kid's happy, he's off there doing his thing, right? So our common tendency is to find a solution and act. So we got a problem, we got to have a solution. And so we were probably hired in some capacity to solve problems. And so our natural tendency is for us to be hardwired to find the best solution that produces the best results with, with the least amount of time, energy, and draining focus, right? And so that's what we're trained to do. And so there are technical problems that can be solved easily. And then there are those that are a little bit more complicated. So what if there are things that are not so clear? So let's talk about our lovely YLE uh, cartoons. This stands for Your Leadership Edge. And this comes from Kansas Leadership Center. And I love these cartoons. They're fabulous. So what do you notice from this cartoon? What does it look like is going on here? Whatever is happening, I don't think it's working. Say more about that. Well, it looks like um, that um, the big Hercules looking guy has been chopping, has chopped off a head, um, but it seems like it's made the creature even angrier. And, um, and maybe the, the girl is like, whoa, this isn't working here. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Anybody else see anything? There are a lot of heads, like a lot of different parts of the thing they're looking at to try to figure out. Very good. Very good. And if you look on the ground at this little dead head, it looks like where that where he was chopped off, maybe two more heads grew, right? So I'd like you to be thinking about times where the quick, obvious solution, chop off the head of the monster, has created additional monsters. 
And this happens at work all the time because we think we know what we're supposed to do. And so we do a thing and it has all these other like effects, negative effects. And so had we spent more time in, what's the magic word? Anybody? Spending more time in. Diagnosing. There you go. Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> Sorry. Spent more time diagnosing, then we'd have better outcomes. Okay, so the next section will be a little video and we're gonna have um, Alex produce for us, I think. Okay, can you see the screen that's blank? Yes. Okay, here we go. With a technical problem, you, you start with a clear problem. With an adaptive challenge, you start with a question. Adaptive challenges and technical problems, they're all over the place. And let me just start by saying, the single biggest mistake people make when trying to exercise leadership is treating an adaptive challenge as if it's a technical problem. With a technical problem, it's almost a quick fix, which doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, but there's someone that knows how to fix it. Technical problems can be really hard. This, this whole set we have around us today, all these incredible people and these machines and equipment, there's incredible technical expertise needed to put on things like this to do incredible things in companies and communities. Technical problems are those things you can call in an expert to solve, or that from a position of authority, I can say, do this, do that, get it done. Adaptive challenges are different. Adaptive challenges are problems that reside in your gut and in your heart, not in your head. The adaptive is the stuff you don't know. It's the, it's the, it's the people stuff. It's the trying to make a difference or trying to do your job well when you, you don't quite know what your job is. I think if people know the distinction between technical and adaptive, they will find that if they really want to improve their organization, then they will understand that adaptive challenges will take involving more people and it's gonna take longer to get where they want to go. Most tough challenges involve technical elements and adaptive elements. And they're both part of organizational life, community life, company life. And too often we treat them, we, we lump everything together. We don't take the time to, to tease out the difference. With an adaptive challenge, it involves more people. It requires learning. It causes us to have to try different experiments, to try different things to see what's going to work best for that organization. Adaptive challenges are the things that require everybody to exercise leadership. Adaptive, that means we are adapting. That means we're changing. Leadership is about change. When you're needing leadership, it's because changes are needed in your company and your community. And change means adaptation. It means we're becoming something different than we were before. Those who can understand those technical elements, those things that can be solved with technical expertise, and the things that have adaptive elements that need engagement in order to be solved. Those are the people who have great success mobilizing people to make progress on tough challenges. And again, that's what leadership is all about. Thanks, Alex. Okay, who can remember what Ed said? is the biggest mistake people make when trying to exercise leadership. Anybody, anybody? I always talk too much, but if nobody else will talk, I will. Um, um, trying to, um, to find solution, technical solutions um, to adaptive problems. Yeah, very good, thank you. It's okay for you to pipe up. We have a kind of a running joke, um, Chrissy Mayer hates silence and some of us can deal with silence better than others. And so we sit on these chats and like, we'll just camp out here until somebody chooses to unmute and talk. But um, okay, so yes, that's exactly right. So treating adaptive challenges as technical problems. 
why is that our mode? Why do we tend to do that? Any ideas why that's like how we roll? Um, I think because we sort of have a tendency to just want to get something done and like have a problem like taking care of and not have to deal with it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And Sarah said it's easy, easier. Mm -hmm. What else? Adaptive can be messy and require experimentation. Yes, that sounds like somebody who has been through leadership stuff before. Experimentation. Yes, it's definitely messy. We want someone to fix it. More timely and easier solution, more apt to not involve me and work. Yes. So I like this. We want someone to fix it. So that that leads into our human nature to depend on someone in authority to like solve it, especially in the workplace. It's like it's ingrained in us from from birth that somebody, a parent or somebody in authority is going to fix uh, something that's going on in our world. Right. Like, you know. We cry when we're a baby, somebody takes care of that. So we're hardwired to depend on someone in authority to fix what we face. But what we know is that authority or authorities cannot solve adaptive challenges through direct orders. And what happens when they, they try is the two-headed monster, the, the other thing. Also, we get in our own way. Our brains are like the biggest culprit. So when we take in new information, we take it in and we connect it to things we already know. So we have what we call learning ruts in our brains, and they have helped us be successful in our life and solve problems. They've worked. So when we get new information, we put them in the old rut where we have in the past been successful. So this notion of experimentation and doing something different and adapting our approach is a little bit foreign. It's outside of our normal comfort zone. So it makes us naturally a little bit resistant to different approaches. And so with adaptive challenges, we know we need to learn something different. And our brain can handle that, but it takes like motivation and intention. So let's talk about the differences between technical work and adaptive work. And you can see how this kind of plays out in our, in our work world. So the solutions for technical work are clear and the problem is clear. There's usually somebody who can fix this. It's their work to fix it. Um, it's efficient, it's quick. And we have an attitude that there's confidence and skill in the solution. Whereas adaptive work, we know, requires learning. And the problem itself requires learning in that diagnostic phase. Whose work is it? It's usually not an expert. It's like a whole bunch of people that have a stake in the issue. And the type of work, just as Cynthia said, is experimental, meaning it may or may not produce results that we want. It's a lot longer term process. And instead of a fix of the problem, we talk about this notion of making progress. We talk about that a lot in leadership work because most often you don't like arrive. You just sort of chip away at the problem as you make, make uh, progress. And then the attitude is one of curiosity. And I love that, that excites me. This idea of just, we know we don't know, but we kind of want to know and we want to know more. And the more we uncover, we want to know more. So this attitude of curiosity, and, and that's one of the best leadership skills you can adopt. Someone comes to you with a problem and instead of putting on your Miss and Mr. Fix-It hats, you go, well, let's think about this. Let's lean into this and get curious. All right, so. We know technical problems can be solved by existing expertise. It's the work of those in authority, right? So let's talk about how technical work plays out. We, we know it's a head thing. It's a, I have the skills, I have the education, I have the license maybe, I have the expertise to solve this problem. And the solutions live in our head and in our logic. They're 
they're susceptible to facts and expertise versus adaptive work. And as you saw in the video, this, this lies in our hearts and our guts and our, and our values and our belief systems. There's not like for sure answers here. Um, it's changing priorities, beliefs, values, habits, and loyalties of other people for a compelling reason. So progress on adaptive challenges require people with the problem to do the work. And it means changing the status quo and rethinking something that we've believed or thought for a long, long time. And it's often painful, <laughs> but they are definitely not um, things that can be solved with a silver bullet or a quick fix or a technical approach. That round hole square peg situation is at play here. Okay, so what happens when your computer dies? You see the blue screen of death. Dun, dun, dun. What kind of problem is that? Technical. Technical. And who do you call? Uh, Alex. IT. IT. <laughs> After Alex? you turn it <laughs> off and back on. Yes. Yeah. Turn. Did you turn it off and turn it back on? Yeah. yeah. I'll ask that question. Yeah, but but typically they're either going to fix your computer, make you feel like an idiot in the process, maybe, or they'll order you a new computer. There's a technical solution, right? Okay, so let's talk about high blood pressure. What do you think about this? Is this technical or adaptive? I'd say technical on the equipment. Okay. So what are some technical elements? Go ahead, Mimi. Oh, I was going to say kind of like half and half. Like in theory, you could get just a prescription for your doctor for high blood pressure medication. Yeah. Um, but also on the flip side, maybe, you know, you could do some adaptive work, maybe like work out some more, do like cardio, maybe get a heart healthy diet. So yeah. it kind of like has a little of both. Yeah, perfect. You can come in over here and teach this. Come into my office. So that's exactly right. That, that's the whole point here. And, and most challenges at work have elements that are technical and have elements that are adaptive. And so usually it's not just black and white, but that's a perfect answer. So let's start to think about how we would tease out technical aspects. So questions that we could ask, do we know somebody who could fix it? Are we clear about the problem? And sometimes that makes you, you know, have to spend a bit more time in diagnosis. Are we clear about the solution? Do we see a clear workflow to solve the issue? And do we feel confident that we can solve it quickly? If you can answer yes to those things, it's probably a fairly technical process, right? So let's talk about adaptive. What are some things that you might ask that help us tease out adaptive aspects? So things you might notice, does there to appear to be a gap between what we say we think and believe and how we actually act? That is one of my biggest pet peeves. We say we believe this thing, but we're doing X, Y, Z. So that's an adaptive issue. Um, and if that happens, how does that behavior show up in our behaviors or our values? Um, are there different versions of the story that are being told by um, people outside of our organization, by people in authority versus people on the front lines? Um, that is an adaptive issue. If there are competing commitments, or competing values at play and at DECA, oh my gosh, we have a ton of those. I'm sure that you can think of some. Um, so those are some questions to be asked. What are, what's not being said about the challenge? Is there something that's a complete elephant in the room um, that no one is willing to talk about? There's an unspeakable thing. Is there work avoidance? We're not gonna, we're not gonna work on this because we'd rather work on the technical aspects because it's really easy. Right? So those are some of the, the things to talk about. 
All right, so teasing out the technical and adaptive elements. What could the, the right person fix right now is a question we could ask. What feels really, really difficult? What values, behaviors, or attitudes might be in conflict with the work that needs to be done? Can we clearly state the problem and the solution? And I would guess most of the time we can't, if we're really being honest. And then who cares about this issue? Can you think about a situation where you or your work group had some of these conversations, if you'd be willing to share. I can share one. Um, so in CPA, I'm on um, our team that works on our electronic record system. So like upgrading things and making it more functional for staff and foster families. Um, and sometimes the fixes are technical, like there's a glitch in this thing and that's an easy solution. You go to the right person, they fix it. But every once in a while, like there's stuff where we really have to look at the process for how we do the form, how we use it, what, you know, what the intention is, does everyone know how to do it? Um, you know, what, what else goes into making that reality? And so usually that means having to have like a separate conversation um, to figure some of those things out before you can get back to the technical aspects of fixing the form or creating it in the system. That's a perfect example because human beings are involved and this whole situation that's the technical process will not work if the human beings don't come along, right? Yeah, that's a great one. Thank you for sharing. Any other uh, examples of how this shows up? How about COVID? <laughs> DM. Yeah, I was, just I was going to say that. Like, to adapt. That might be <laughs> one of those other things. Then. We don't talk about COVID, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that, and I thought, I don't want to mention the C word. So, <laughs> but that definitely made us change our whole way of providing services, too. Yeah, and we're still living through all of that. But I mean, I look through these questions and oh my gosh, COVID is right here, you know? I mean, if we decided that safety was a thing that needed to happen, and in order to do that, that meant people didn't come to the office, that was a, a policy, right? A technical solution meant people went home. Except that, then we had this, what is essential, what is expendable situation where services could not continue to be delivered with everybody at home. So then you brought everybody into this hybrid situation, which 100% is adaptive. So we could spend hours talking about that and we won't, but you can see how most of the things that we do in the workplace have elements of both. And that's really, really tricky. And an active leadership is being able to navigate through the adaptive stuff and not just saying, oh, well, the quick thing is just a quick policy change. You know, um, because the truth is when we don't have a solution and we can't like necessarily lead people to it, sometimes we just avoid the tough conversations altogether because who wants that? Cynthia. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. You know, another thing, Kelly, is it really shows how much um, people's beliefs and values because even if we think we have a solution, um, I mean, there's mental health involved and people being tired of being isolated and not coming together. So training team, we look at, do we do our trainings virtually or do we do them in person? Um, and that's huge because it does involve a lot of people's beliefs and values on both sides. So um, definitely a great example. And, and there's so much we could do, do with that. Thank you for that. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the on both sides. That's a whole nother thing too. And, and that exists here in the workplace and it, it shades how things happen. It, it just does. So we know that a, most of what we do involves a mix of adaptive and technical aspects. And our growth area is distinguishing which is which. 
And I would encourage you as you're thinking about stuff, the hard stuff in your work to like acknowledge and give yourself permission to go, you know why this is hard? It's because it's an adaptive challenge and it's by nature supposed to be hard. So maybe that's a little bit of encouragement. If it's hard and you can't figure it out, there's a reason for that. So how do we start? So to be able to like hone our skill in this area, we need to increase our attention to the people stuff. We need to listen for the human costs involved with any change. And sometimes we need to be the voice that speaks those in existence because sometimes people choose to not say that. We need to listen for the authority for answers, but we also need to speak up and be aware of any losses um, and values and vulnerabilities that are expressed. And I would encourage you as you are in the middle of whatever you're in the middle of, to be that person who's willing to share back, oh, we're gonna make this change. And you say, well, when we make that change, I want you to be aware that these are the impacts of that. It doesn't mean you're not willing to you know, go along, but you're willing to talk about, here's some of the people stuff that this is gonna impact. So sometimes we might hear something like, we have tried five different approaches to the problem and nothing has changed. Or we might hear, you know, it's just too big of an issue for us to try to tackle that. I mean, we can't solve, you know, the world hunger problems right here. So, so you may get people with that resistance. So let's think about stuff in our DECA world. So I'd like you to think about a challenge that you're facing in your work world and maybe spend a couple of minutes um, thinking about how um, you are involved in diagnosing whatever it is that's facing you. And then in a moment, um, we'll share a couple of these ideas. So the next slide, let's go, to the, go ahead and go to the next slide. This might help you think about um, what kind of an issue you want to share. So let's just go back up to that, that slide and I'll give you like a minute or so um, to think about one and we'll hear from a few voices. Does anybody have one they just are dying to share? I can share, Kelly. Thank you, Alex. Uh, my, my brain goes a technical for a lot of fixes right away, um, kind of the nature of, you know, my work and what I do here. But I think of, you know, the intranet or even signing up for these leadership sessions, you know, it's easy in my mind. Okay, you sign up, you go to it. It's pretty cut and dry how to attend, but how do we spark people to come? How do we promote this? How do we invite others to say, hey, this is worth your time to, you know, spend with us? Uh, I think those kind of, you know, adaptive things, thinking of what, you know, if I was in their shoes, what would I look at? And just kind of putting myself on the other side of the table and, and inviting those other voices that, you know, you may not think about right away. You might have your um, quote unquote, you know, leaders in the room, but what about how does this affect everyone else in the agency or other places uh, that you probably didn't think about their voice? I love that. And so that leads into your acting experimentally. So this, this one hour bite-sized leadership session thing is what is an experiment that you guys have tried. Right. And, and trying to find other ways to promote it, not just here's an email, go. And that should have been enough, but it's okay. We have uh, the calendar that gets updated or we talk about it, you know, by the water cooler or, you know, other places that you could uh, promote this and do it internal. Uh, so you're not just having that same, you know, kind of robotic uh, way of telling the story. I think. Yeah. Very good. I love that example because I think it's playing out in so many different ways across the agency right now. Just this idea of how do you engage people to do this other stuff, which I think is really fun stuff, but there's just a sense of people aren't 
we're not we're not well as a as a culture in general but um exactly and that's kind of the elephant in the room it's like well you want me to do something else besides my you know eight to five day you know or whatever that time shift is like yeah we don't have time we don't have you know we can always find excuses or reasons why we're not attending or showing up but you know, have you reached out why that is? So that yeah. kind of worked out. Yeah. I and would that, just give feedback that I, for me, because I never know what I'm doing and it's all it's really busy. It's hard to plan out, but you sent that email this morning and I'm like, you know what? I have an hour. I can do this. I couldn't plan ahead, but I'm like, I can jump on and do this. So that and, and I have to say, what, I wasn't registered until 850 this morning. I was like, ah, I guess I could show up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great examples. And Jenny, we make the time for the things we want to make the time for, right? Isn't that true? Yep. I think some I think some people don't, well, part of it's because of their job or they're out of the office or whatever, but I think a lot of uh, people are afraid their supervisor <clears throat> doesn't, you know, think this is important enough for them to participate in either. So they're, they don't feel like that leadership comes down and says, hey, we really want you to participate in this too. So uh, I think that has a lot to do with some of the reasons people don't join in. Mm -hmm. So what you're, what you're practicing is curiosity and diagnosing right here. And, and that's how we all need to think about these challenges in the workplace is, and everywhere is what else can we do? What else can we think about? Who else do we need to hear from? Those kinds of things. Anybody else have another adaptive situation at work that they're willing to share? I'll share one. Okay. Um, we lost the uh, seatbelts are for everyone pro, uh, person in Oklahoma. So Johnny and I are having to cover Oklahoma as well as our other two jobs that we have. So we've had to do a lot of technical work and a lot of adaptive work on how we're going to get schools enrolled and uh, hopefully by the end of the month. But uh, so we've been doing a lot of work on that and that's been a real challenge on top of everything else that we have to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for stepping in and doing that. That's an example of us getting creative to, to meet the needs of the contract and the grant. And yet there's so many adaptive elements to that. Good example. What else? One more example. Can you guys hear what the clock in my office that goes click, click, click? I feel like every day at work coming in the office becomes a technical adaptive work. <laughs> so just always having to adapt to something. True, 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 true. Okay, we'll move on. I think you all probably know this stuff. So, um, so how do I identify adaptive aspects? Well, when you're having circular conversations, lots of chatter without really getting anywhere, um, we talk a lot, but whatever the thing is, it's not getting solved. Um, different factions, different groups will describe the problem differently. Um, that's always a big one. That's, I think, one that I, in where I sit, I see that a lot. It's really interesting. Um, and then the idea that those involved seem to have the perspective that the issue can be solved by authority or just resources, outside resources only can solve it. Never a good idea. So we know that it involves stakeholders. Lots of different folks involved need to be at the table. Nobody seems to know the answer. And past attempts at, quote, solving the problem have been ineffective. And it involves loss. Why would it involve loss? This is going to come up later in your leadership work, but let's talk a bit about loss. I can relate to this because whenever you make changes and you have um, different perspectives, not everybody can win or the change won't happen. That's, I think, a lot of why um, 
that earlier, what you said is everybody talks about it, but no progress gets made because who wants to give up anything? Yes, someone's gonna lose something in this. And, and that's just kind of how it goes, yeah. So any one of these issues can make something adaptive, but if you have one or more of these things at play, the likelihood of it being an adaptive challenge is really, really high. And you should know that it's hard work and that people don't love it. And that's why we don't typically make progress. And the active leadership is you leaning into it and trying to create experiments to make progress. Avoidance is definitely not the solution. Okay, so what makes pr making progress so difficult? Thoughts on that? Other than what I said that it's hard? I think it's been mentioned, but trying trying to please everybody. Mm. So, I mean, when I think about this, I think about our, our placing of foster kids and we're having issues with that and we're trying to make technical changes. And then when we present that, it's like the majority of the people don't like it because it's a change. And I, so we're just, we're in the middle of this right now. So oh, yeah. how much is adaptive? How much is technical? How do we make it work? So that's a good one. Can't make people all happy. And I hate that. Yeah, me too. I think communication too, because somebody, you know, somebody may read an email and interpret it one way and somebody else reads it this way. So then it's like, nobody knows, you know, exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just get, um, not necessarily anxious, but like we just, like we talked about earlier, like we just want it done now. We don't have time to mess with this. Let's just get it done. And so whether or not it's a good solution doesn't matter. We just need a solution now. Yeah. So I, I think that that hinders progress a lot of times um, because we're not willing to spend the time on it. Whereas we probably end up spending that same amount of time on it in the long run by having to go back to it time after time, instead of just spending the time, you know, at once to find a real solution. Yes, so true. That's my next slide. And also time is money. So we're gonna spend a lot more money too. But that drive for instant success, we just wanna fix it. And then that superhero syndrome, this idea that we, we wanna solve it and get it and be good. And then ignorance, that, that's what gets in the way. Um, sometimes we're just unaware of the different distinctions and you think that it's a technical situation. So that's part of the deal. But being here and talking about this helps you all take a step forward and beginning to tease out the different elements. We know that understanding technical adaptive work is critical for success. So what can you do to be more intentional in distinguishing adaptive and technical work? What are you willing to commit to in your challenges to apply this competency in your world? I think for me, one of the things I can do is when I'm really struggling, I'm gonna give myself grace to understand that it's hard for a reason. And I think that's like freeing to know that if you're banging your head against the wall and you can't make progress, well, that's because it's not you, it's because it's hard for a reason and it's tricky. So when you are aware of that, maybe you can then regain strength to go in and keep trying from different angles. That idea that Alex was talking about, about asking questions, well, why isn't this working for this group? Why might it not work for this faction? All of that is an act of leadership. So this intentional effort that you're going to practice it, and I would encourage you to take a few minutes to create a couple of action steps that you um, would, would be willing to take to, to make progress in your leadership with this. And even if it's just as simple as um, in a conversation, you start going, oh, that sounds like an adaptive challenge. That's progress. That's using the language. And also, so many of us have been trained trained in leadership that when you do that, 
it helps us to also get in that stance of, okay, I need to look at this differently. And I'm going to stop looking at it as a technical thing. And I'm going to look at it more as an adaptive thing that, that'll help your group come along. So that might be something that that you would be willing to do. Anybody have anything they'd be willing to share about what you're going to do differently? I think just when I check in with those that I supervise, um, just trying to approach the problem. I mean, just, yeah, like you said, just trying to determine is it adaptive or is it technical and just kind of trying to pass that on to them um, and work through it together um, and just bringing that to their attention. Yeah, it's really hard. It's hard. Anything with people is hard, guys. It's just that's life, right? All right. So we're on the home stretch here. I'm almost done. Address, addressing adaptive challenges involve loss. We've talked a little bit about that. It's going to involve loss for someone. And so being mindful of that and learning to speak to that loss authentically from your heart can help you make progress. So that's another active leadership that I would encourage you to lean into. Um, and those are other KLC competencies that are going to help strengthen your leadership. And we know that adaptive challenges uh, demand conserving what is best from the past, getting rid of what didn't work from the past and inventing new ways to build from the past. And that is all about experimentation, which we're gonna talk about down the road. Questions or comments from today, any takeaways? This is a really foundational course and I, I tried to present it like you already know stuff because you do. Um, but anything that you want to throw out there or questions? I mean, I think this was just a good reminder. Um, you know, I think, like you said, I think we all kind of know this but just being able to kind of put a name to it and then just kind of seeing like the two columns, you know, next to each other of what it involves, what each involves. Um, you know, I think just be, bringing it to the forefront of our minds, I think just is a nice reminder and will help as we go about our work. Yeah. Awesome. Well, as you go through this, you'll be asked what your adaptive challenges or what your leadership challenges. And I remember being asked that in my first days in leadership work. And I was like, I don't know. But maybe if you start thinking about the times where you're having circular conversations or you've been working on something for a long time and it's still driving you crazy, those things are probably pieces of whatever that leadership challenge is for you. So when you're asked that, maybe you'll now be closer to knowing and defining what that challenge is. So, hey, thanks to Sarah and Alex for producing today. And thank you guys for your hour of your day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. It's gonna be beautiful weather here. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you for coming. Bye.